Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Thank you very much, Sister Timmons, for that beautiful selection. She began singing, singing at a child at a young age in the children's choir at Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles under the leadership of the late Reverend A. G. Kendrick, who was her pastor and her grandfather. She has recorded with many well-known artists, gospel artists. Since then, she has carried on the legacy of for all to learn over the years. And she used her talent by singing to glorify our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you so very much for blessing us with that selection. It gives me great pleasure to bring up Pastor Eli, who will give us our opening prayer.
It is an honor to support my friend, Assemblymember Mike Gibson, in the celebration of life. As we honor and remember our fathers, our mothers, our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors, our loved ones, who we've lost due to this pandemic. My assignment today is to open with a prayer. Now, as you're watching, you may ask, why a prayer? Why now? Why here? I wouldn't fault you or blame you if you even thought or said, what can a prayer do? And that's okay. See, there are mysteries, painful circumstances that we just can't explain at times. All we can do is mourn, weep, but we can also feel and laugh and remember. But a prayer, a prayer is powerful. You know, in the New Testament, we learn about Jesus and his disciples. We learn about how his disciples walked with Jesus for about three years. And it is interesting to see that it is recorded that only one thing did the disciples ask to learn. They saw Jesus walk on water. They saw Jesus do incredible miracles. But the one thing that is recorded that they asked Jesus, that they wanted to learn, that they needed, was teach us how to pray. So there's something powerful about a prayer, praying life something that Jesus demonstrated, something that his disciples wanted, and something that we can experience right here, right now. A prayer is powerful. A prayer brings healing, a conversation, a meditation, a moment to speak with your creator. A prayer opens the heavens. A prayer brings healing. And so I ask you, to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Right here, right now, right where you are, if you feel comfortable, would you repeat after me? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who have sinned against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever now let me pray over you God here we just ask you in this moment for those who are watching, those who are listening, those who are present. We pray for the families that have been affected by this pandemic in many ways. We pray for your mercy, for your grace, Jesus, to continue to provide comfort, to continue to provide love and peace in these times that we are in. We have hope in you, Lord, that you would continue to guide us, and lead us, lead this nation, lead your people, but that our hope and our trust continues and remains in you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much, Pastor Eli who hails from Wilmington. We appreciate that fervent prayer. Next, I want to bid each and every one of you a good evening and thank you for joining us virtually here at the Roosevelt Memorial Park Cemetery in the 64th Assembly District, the COVID-19 Memorial Service and Celebration of Life. This event hence will adhere to social distancing and the guidelines that has been established by the CDPH and the CDC. My name is Mike Gibson. I serve this great community as the State Assembly member representing the 64th State Assembly District. Those are areas of Watts, Willowbrook, where I was born and raised, Compton, Carson, Linwood, Wilmington, North Long Beach, Gardena, Harbor Gateway, and Torrance. 
I also serve as the Assembly Democratic Caucus Chair. Our community has suffered a tremendous loss of so many loved ones during this pandemic. Although we cannot congregate as we once did, but we come together to pay homage and respect and recognition in a public way to those who have lost their lives due to this pandemic. Those are the mothers, the fathers, the sisters, the brothers, the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, the people we go to church with or went to church with, the people we saw at the grocery store, and even people who we don't know name but we heard their stories. We recognize them because we're here to celebrate those individuals so that we will never forget who they are and those who are here left behind. We wrap our arms around you during these very difficult times. We're going to say their names out loud so that we'll never forget. We're going to celebrate them so that we'll continue to remember the love that we share for each and every one who have lost their lives due to this pandemic. And we as legislators are doing everything that we possibly can to provide resources and also support as we flatten and turn the curve during this pandemic. I want to also introduce at this time where we are. We are here at the Roosevelt Memorial Park Cemetery, and it gives me great pleasure to bring up George Granaberry III, who is the director of this great cemetery, for remarks. Well, thank you. Um, I'm here today on behalf of the executives, the board of directors, and the staff that works here at Roosevelt Memorial Park. Obviously, the last 12 months have represented a very strong challenge for all of us, but um, that pales in comparison to the challenge that you have for those of you who've lost someone and for those of you who may not have been able to attend a homegoing service. I think saying goodbye to a loved one is probably one of the hardest things that we all have to do in life. And though words may not help, we offer our condolences and hope that actions such as this make it easier for you to find the closure that you deserve. So our heart goes out to you and we grieve with you and we'll be here. When this is over, we'll still be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you being our host and also for your park staff for doing an impeccable job for allowing us to be here to pay and celebrate and pay remembrance to those who lost their lives due to this pandemic. I want to also recognize a number of elected officials who have co-sponsored this event and we really appreciate their co-sponsorship. Certainly we couldn't have done it without them. We want to recognize uh, our senator, our state senator, Stephen Bradford, representing the 35th Senate District. We want to recognize Carson City Council member, Jawan Hilton, the mayor of the great city of Gardena, California, Tasha Serta, the city of Compton Mayor Pro Tem, Michelle Chambers, city councilwoman, Emma Sharif, Compton City Councilwoman Tana McCoy, Long Beach City Council Member Al Austin, Compton Unified School District Board President Makai Ali, Compton Unified School District Board Member Alma Pleasant, Compton Unified School District Board Member Charles Davis, Compton School Board Member Satra Zarita, Compton Unified School District Board Member Lawana Green, City Council Member, City of Gardena, Mark, Dr. Mark Henderson, Compton Community College Board of Trustee, Board Member Barbara Calhoun, Compton Community College Board of Trustee, Dr.
Deborah, Sims, LeBlanc, Compton Community College Board of Trustee, Board Member Sandra Moss. These are all individuals who have lent their names to help gather names of individuals in their community who have lost their lives due to this pandemic. It gives me great pleasure to bring up someone who's certainly been a co-laborer in Sacramento with me, championing uh, so many various causes to help move California and strengthen California and move the California forward. Uh, my good friend, uh, California State Senator Stephen Bradford, representing the 35th Senate District. He will be laying a wreath that will be representing the city of Los Angeles, Harbor Gateway, Wilmington, and Watts. Good evening. It's truly an honor to be here and join my colleague, Assemblyman Mike Gibson, and want to thank him for his tremendous leadership in assembling this event, this memorial ceremony here today. Uh, obviously, I didn't place that too solidly. I apologize. Uh, but as I stated, let's recognize Mike Gibson and give him a round of applause for taking time out. We're here today because a little less than a year ago, we were brought to the attention of this disease, a disease now that has taken over a half a million residents in the United States. 10% of those are here in the state of California, with another 40% being here in LA County, and another 10% uh, right here in my district uh, of the 35th Senate District, another 2,000 people have lost their lives. Many individuals who shouldn't have lost their lives had we had someone in Washington, D.C. who had taken this disease serious a year ago. So, as the pastor Eli stated, deliver us from evil, at least we have been delivered from the evil one, the evil orange one that was once in the White House. So, <laughs> we should be happy about that. But, again, we're here today to recognize the countless lives that were lost due to the pandemic, but I also want to recognize and mention two names that were lost too due, due to police violence because this pandemic has allowed police violence to grow in our community. So just down the street from here, Andres Gardado, the young man who was shot by the LA County Sheriff's Department, and hopefully our new DA will open up an investigation to bring forth charges on those officers. And Dijon Kinsey, Kizzy, who was shot on August 31st, the last day of our legislative session last year, again by the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. So not only have we lost over 50,000 residents here in the state of California, a half a million in the, in the nation to uh, COVID, we've lost countless other lives to police violence and unnecessary violence. So I'm honored to stand here and join my colleague Mike Gibson and all the other elected officials in recognizing but never forgetting the lives that were lost, lives that were mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, neighbors, friends, co-workers that we have lost and we will never get back but we'll never forget. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much, Senator Bradford, for those remarks. We also want to recognize um, others who have also um, sponsored this event. Uh, Mayor Asia Brown, City of Compton. Also, Council Member Jose Salache, representing the beautiful, great city of Linwood, and also the mayor, who will be also coming here from the great city of Linwood, Santana, who will also have words in a few moments. So thank those individuals for being with us uh, this evening and also their sponsorship of this event. Next, we want to bring up the mayor of the city of Gardena, um, Mayor Tasha Serta.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'd first like to begin by thanking our assembly member for just taking time to have this amazing ceremony for the so many people that we have lost in each of our individual cities, um, the county, and in the state of California. I think it's important that we take time to recognize the people who we've lost. Unfortunately, we can't sit here and say that this horrific pandemic is far removed from us. It's unfortunately affected somebody we know, whether it's been friend or family member or colleague. Unfortunately, I have to say that I've lost three people very close to me that I knew. And I thank you for letting us have this time now so that we can begin the mourning process and have something similar to what we would have had a funeral had we been able to all gather together. So Assembly Member, thank you again for taking this time to read the names of the individuals in our cities and our community. And I can't tell you how much our residents appreciate you for taking the time to do this. Again, thank you very much. My name is Tasha Serta, Mayor of the City of Gardena. Thank you very much, Mayor Serta, for your leadership in the City of Gardena. Next, it uh, gives me great pleasure to bring up the Mayor of the City of Linwood, uh, Mayor Santana. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, my name is Maricela Santana. I am the mayor of the city of Linwood for 2021. I'd like to thank, first of all, thank Assemblyman Gibson for inviting us and including us in this beautiful ceremony to, to say, to basically to say goodbye to all of the lives that we've lost over the last year. This is not something that um, we're able to say, you know, let us pray for New York. Let us pray for, for Mexico. Let us pray. This is something that we're all mourning worldwide. And I think it's important for us to, to come together, not just throughout the year, but when it's already been a year and we continue losing people. It's important to, to recognize that all of these people who we've lost, they weren't just numbers. They're not just part of, of data and graphics. These people are families and grandparents and we're losing entire generations of people in our communities. I am, I am part of the Southeast Los Angeles area region and our numbers are extremely high. We have been um, we have been the hardest region in the state, and um, our numbers continue growing. We're, I'm here to thank Assemblyman Gibson for including us in this memorial to acknowledge that we have lost so many people unnecessarily to this virus, and I hope that we can all band together and pray that this will all be over soon. And in memory of all the lives that we've lost in all of our cities, because it's not just New York, it's not Texas, it's not Mexico, it's not Washington, it's all of us. We're all in this together. And you know, we can't just say, let's pray for this community or that community. We have to just pray for all of our families because we're all being affected one way or the other. Thank you so much, Assemblyman Gibson, for doing this for our families. I know that you, ha you yourself have gone through so much in your life. So to do this for all of our loved ones, thank you very, very much on behalf of all of us. You say the Spanish? You, um, I said a little okay. bit, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, if you don't mind, I'd like to invite my colleague, 
uh, Jose Luis Olache, Councilman Jose Luis Olache, to say a few words, you know, to join me. I would like to thank the, um, yo quiero darle las gracias a la asambleísta Gibson por hacer esto para todas nuestras comunidades, para traernos juntos, para unirnos, para reconocer que todos estamos en esto juntos. Todos estamos perdiendo familias. Um, estamos perdiendo, hemos perdido una generación de personas. Um, la gente que nos está, que nos da las enseñanzas de la vida, estamos perdiendo, perdiéndolos cada día que pasa. Entonces, no nomás tenemos que juntarnos para rezar por toda la gente que hemos perdido, pero para traer este, um, soluciones, para traer esta vacuna, para poder salvar a, lo, a las personas que más queremos en el mundo, a nuestros familiares. Este, bueno, este, y aquí le paso el micrófono a mi colega José Luis Olache. Thank you, Mayor Santana, and thank you, Assemblymember Mike Gibson. 2020 has been a horrific year for many of us. On a very personal level, I have lost the biggest treasure of my life, my mother. I am a person of God, person of faith, and I know my mom is out there join the life of our Lord and many of our loved ones that believe and have accepted Jesus. But at the end of the day, we're still human here on this earth, and it hurts deep inside. So Mike Gibson, brother, hermano, thank you for honoring the many lives. Thank you to my colleagues on the city councils, mayors. It has been <laughs> the worst feeling in my life to lose a loved one and my mother. So I join my Linwidians, my Compton brothers and sisters, my Carson brothers and sisters, my Gardena brothers and sisters, and that amazing man, Mike Gibson, for honoring the lives of our loved ones. It has not been easy. It has been the worst feeling of our lives. And I join our many citizens and residents of our community. And thank you, Mike Gibson, Mike Gibson for honoring our loved ones. Gracias a Dios por este día. Thank you uh, for all of you for honoring our loved ones. And regardless of how you've lost your loved one, let's recognize them. And for all of us that believe in our Jesus Christ and our Lord, we know that they're in a better place, but nonetheless, it hurts deep inside. Thank you to our loved ones. Thank you to Steve Bradford for, for being here and to our many loved friends and family members for being here today. Let's keep celebrating the lives of those that impacted this world. Because at the end of the day, regardless if it was five years, 10 years, 63 years that my mom had on this earth, they made an impact in this, in this world. Sure. So thank you, Maria de la Luz, Solache Arrieta, for your uh, blessings to this world, for those amazing meals you cook for our neighbors, for our neighbor's dogs. Whoever it was, she loved everyone. And that's the same similar stories that our neighbors in Linwood, Gardena, Compton, Carson had. Thank you to our loved ones. Thank you for this moment. And we will never forget them because at the end of the day, they belong in our hearts. Thank you, Linwood. And thank you, Mike Gibson, for all of your love. Gracias. Thank you very much. Next up, we want to invite up the Mayor Pro Tem from the city of Compton, Mayor Pro Tem, Michelle Chambers. Thank you. Can you help me? Thank you. Good evening. Thank you to Assemblyman Gibson for hosting an event that is so important to everyone around the world, in our state, and in our nation. 
I personally was affected. I lost six family members last year to this pandemic. So I truly empathize with all the loved ones and all the families who lost their loved one. And to my colleague, Councilman Salachi, I love you. Compton's numbers, we are at 16,514 positive cases. Majority of all, everyone we're celebrating this evening, what is different about their deaths is that they died alone. Many family members could be not by their, loves, by their bedside. Some were not allowed in the hospital and some were not even allowed funerals. To, I'd like to thank everyone who have funded, I'd like to thank Assemblyman Gibson, Senator Bradford for allocating resources to our community to fight this pandemic. Thank you to all of the, uh, please get tested get immunized, wear your mask, and let's flatten this curve and end this pandemic for we can do this together. Lastly, before I leave, I'd like to thank all the first responders who risk their lives every single day to care for who cared for our loved ones. Our firefighters, our law enforcement officers, our grocery store workers, all those who remained on the battlefield while we fought this battle. And lastly, um, that wreath that I just placed is on behalf of all the 231 residents of the city of Compton that we lost to COVID. Thank you again for having us. My condolences and thoughts are with all, the, all of those who have lost their loved ones to this pandemic and to all my colleagues that are here this evening. Thank you for having me and thank you again, Assemblyman Gibson. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Chambers. Next, we would like to have from the city of Carson, California, Council Member Jawan Hilton. Last year, uh, it seems like it was a nightmare, and we still haven't woke up from the bad dream. Uh, so many people have been affected by COVID. Uh, if you haven't been infected, you have been affected by COVID. I had a newborn baby in the middle of COVID and was not able to go in the delivery room with my wife. Had to watch it by FaceTime, had a number of family members, a number of friends who have been affected and some have died because of the virus. I'm happy to report that Carson was one of the first cities to offer free testing to every resident, whether you had a symptom or not. Happy to report that we vaccinated over 5,000 people last week at the Dignity Health Sports Park. We can't fight this pandemic alone. We need one another. It's too soon to take off our masks. It's too soon to even touch one another again. I hope we are able to get back to that day. Our communities, communities of color have been dis, uh, uh, dis, in disarray. I wanna advise all of you if you can and will. There are people driving down from neighboring cities or cities far as Malibu to our communities and taking our vaccines. I want to encourage you, if you have the opportunity to get the vaccine, to get the vaccine to make sure that we stop the spread of this virus. I want to thank Assemblymember Mike Gibson for allowing us this moment to grieve. People are dying alone. People are not being able to be celebrated at the end of life. But today we celebrate all of those who have died of COVID, you don't die to be famous, you die to be unforgettable. And Councilman Jawan Hilton from the city of Carson.
Thank you very much, Councilman Hilton. Next up, from the city of Long Beach, Councilman Al Austin. Thank you, um, and uh, first of all, let me know, let you know I bring greetings on behalf of uh, the residents of the city of Long Beach. I'm happy to represent um, our city and our mayor, uh, Robert Garcia. I'd like to thank uh, Assemblymember Gibson for allowing us to come together uh, today uh, to remember the countless tens of thousands of lives that we've lost in this region. 862 residents in the city of Long Beach. Due to COVID-19 over the last 12 months. It would take us back and reflect a year ago. Um, our, our state, our cities, there was a great deal of uncertainty and panic. And over the course of a year, we have endured a very, very tough experience, losing loved ones, losing friends, losing neighbors, losing countless amount of elders, matriarchs, patriarchs, and our families, and a lot of grief. Grief that because of this pandemic, we have not been able to come together. We have not been able to fully grieve as a community and as families. And so I really appreciate this opportunity to come together and join with Assemblymember Gibson and Senator Bradford and other local elected officials to, to, to let you know that we, we care and that we're going to continue to deliver services and make sure that this vaccine rollout is as aggressive and strong as it possibly can be to ensure that we are saving lives. We are saving lives and, and we're honoring those who are also on the front lines and have been on the front lines for the last year. Those health workers, those public service workers, those grocery workers, those folks who've been on the front lines of this battle, um, we, we honor them as well because they haven't been able to grieve and they have, has been, has already been mentioned, have been impacted drastically by this as well. And so it's going to take some time for us to get past what we've experienced over the last 12 months, but we're going to be continue to do that. And I know that every one of these elected officials is committed to continuity and sure, ensuring that the government is, is working uh, for, for our residents. And so uh, on behalf, again, on the, of the city of Long Beach, I uh, extend my, my uh, deepest condolences to anybody who has lost a loved one, um, but, and let you know that we're with you and continue will be, to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman Austin. We realize that the mayor, Robert Garcia, lost his mother and stepfather due to this pandemic. And our prayers and thoughts goes out to that family. Next up, we'll have Bishop LaFoe, who will bring our prayer of comfort to the family. Bishop. Let us pray. Our dear precious Heavenly Father, as we gather here in commemorating this uh, beautiful ceremony, Heavenly Father, we ask for thy continuous spirit to be with us. We are grateful for those who put all the efforts into making this happen. Heavenly Father, we ask at this time for a special blessing, a heavenly blessing for our lost one, especially their families. Heavenly Father, our lost one have left legacy in our, in our community, in our church, 
especially in our families. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that their legacy may continue to build us up in our immortal times. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will be in each ground that they are beloved lost one are in. As we visit them, may we be strengthened from them. May we remember them. Heavenly Father, whether they are primary or their youth or whether in advanced in age, we ask Heavenly Father that you will bless us and their families. We're grateful for all of those who put the efforts in making their uh, uh, memorial come alive. Heavenly Father, as we lost them, we know, we know that there is a great plan that you have set up for all mankind to come back and to be with you. And that plan is called a plan of salvation. May we understand that plan. May we be comforted by that great plan. Heavenly Father, that plan was put forth in this world, the world that we are in today, to make us stronger, to make us see the light, to bring peace, to bring uh, uh, the light of thy son, Jesus Christ, in our life, in our communities, and everywhere that we are in. Heavenly Father, as we pray and, and uh, um, remember the, the lost one that have passed on, we again are grateful for the legacy. May our community be uplifted for whatever they have brought us to, uh, to us. We are sorrow, we are sorry, we are in, in depth of, uh, of this uh, pandemic. But we know, Heavenly Father, with the faith in thee and thy son, Jesus Christ, in the faith that we have in our community, our churches, and our surroundings, we will find peace. We will find victory in all of the aspects of our life. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be called sons and daughters of thee. We're grateful for our belief that there's a supreme being that will help us in these latter days. We ask Heavenly Father as we close this prayer that you will be with this plot or the other plots that they might be in. That it will be watched over them with the weather and other extreme things that may happen to them. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for our city official to put uh, this uh, great memorial to make us remember, to make our more and more victorious than sadness. We love you, Heavenly Father. May thy peace be continually be with us in the light that we will see the tunnel be open and we will see the our normal life come back to us. We are grateful for every individual that the names will be read soon. We bless them. We bless our, their families. Heavenly Father, we ask for all this blessing and say these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who bear our burdens at Calvary. He atoned for us to make our sorrow become our, our victors. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to bless this ceremony all the way to the end of it. In the name of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you very much, Bishop. Next. We will have our readers please come up. We have Miss Lucretia Gibson and also Rudy Melendez, who will be reading the names 
of those who've lost their lives due to this pandemic. So hear their names, celebrate those loved ones with us. Good evening. As the assembly member has stated, we are here to remember the lives of a very small fraction of individuals who have lost, lost their lives due to COVID. But we are here to say their names and we want the families to know that we are here with them. Tobias Carlos, Sheila Sapp, Sharon Jackson, Bishop Horace Allen, Bishop Anthony PG Sr., Aaron Roseboro, Denzel Roseboro, Shakir Kiki Chambers, Rafael Quintero, Jose Luis Quintero. Evi Quintero, Tommy Ross, Michelle Ross, Ingrid Carrar, Warren Clemens, Elder Michael Bradford, Bobby Cato, Venus Brownie Tillette, David Reed, Reverend Joe Owens. Ramon Robles, Ramon Ponce, Beatrice Leon, Margarita Rodarte, David Rodriguez, Latifa Smith, Destiny Woods, Mac Daniels, Sean Williams, Monica Rodriguez. Damon Ball, Athena Richards, Samuel Wilson, Rena Woods, Stephen Williams, Sean Brown, Diana Wilson, Mara Green, Stephanie Taylor, David Wilson. Mia McDaniel, Tom Brown, Monica Montoya, Celia Marcos, Yolanda Hernandez, William Ross, Patricia Daniels, Sandra Hamilton, Michael Robertson, Millie Wilson. Tanya Smith, Evelyn Garcia, Jason Reed, Marcia Sanders, Betty Watson, Trisha Saunders, Michael Anderson, James Morden, Daniel Jackson, Sylvia Smith. Inez Wells, Daisy Landers, LJ Daniels, Sabra Mitchell, Clarence Gallo, Rudolph Von Berg, Mark Stephen Hughes, Bobby Wilson, Reverend Dr. Vera Alice Bagneris, Stanley Kirk. Ora Johnson, Aika Latash, Father Francisco, Rudy Cuevas, Angela Paredes Tail, Jose de Jesus Morales, Emilia Morales, Gwendolyn Porter, Vera McCown, Pat Hellerud. Sapopalai Salima, Balatolu Fa Alatena, Faule Salima, Luberta Shaw, Va R. To Alamatai, Saufoy. To Alamatai, Maria Elena Luchuga, Isaac James Bruner, Felipe Rosales, Manuel Mojarro, Sandra Cardona, Johnny Lee Turner, Larry Morrison, Ernest Moore Sr., Mildred Harvey, Roland Lanehart, Mary Fernandez, Herman Bernard Jr., Mara F. Garcia, Rafael Quintero. Joe Quintero, Evi Quintero, Karen Finley, Alfred Sarian, Roland Novato, Sandra Jordan, Edgar Valenzuela, Mariah Gomez, Norma Cachon, Alfred Thompson. Marva Davis, Rebecca Marley, Steve Hernandez, Brian Catalano, Gabriela O'Donnell, mother to Mayor Robert Garcia, Greg O'Donnell, stepfather to Mayor Robert Garcia, 
Yolanda Ortiz, Edith Verona Segura, Patricia Fitch, Agustina Ramirez. Phyllis Arredondo, Urbana Ramirez, Lydia Mendoza Lopez, Edmund Valdez, Barbara Mendoza, Daisy Alsua, Malua Maluia, Anna Asuma, Betty Elisada, Bai Tumalatai, Chris Bolton. Manuel Lafoa, Tao Fi Siaoisi, Solanamai Tuai, Mauro Garcia, Karen Finley, Floyd Anderson, Bob Clark, Rosalind Rena Lies. From Teamsters Local 848, Robert Alcala, Richard White, Leonard Rios, Enrique Mejia, Marco Argullo, Mike Durante, Moses Amarian, Avalardo Acaguara, Luis Tallapanta, Alberto Cruz Munoz, Jose Barsuto, Delroy Angus, James Butler Lewis, Crescencio Aguirre, Jose Rodriguez, Julian Flores, Rene Real. Linda Smith from ILWU Local 13, Martin Briones, John Stuckey, Abraham Amesqua, Jamie Salazar, Humberto Marquez, Rudy Moreno, Efren Molina, John Amaro, David Rodriguez, and Nicholas Lomeli. Local 63, Eddie Greenwood, Joseph Radish. Local 94, Edmund Valdez, Ernie Lowe. Lays Auxiliary Local 8, Lydia Lopez. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate Lucretia Gibson and Rudy uh, Melendez for reading those names. Thank you for sending those names to us so we can honor the life, the legacy, and the memory of those who've lost their lives due to this pandemic. Next, I would like to invite uh, Senator Bradford and myself. We will light a candle. The first candle will be representing those who lost their lives in the 64th Assembly District. It will be a candle of hope. The second will be lighting for the city and the county of Los Angeles, a candle of hope. Senator Bradford will light a candle representing the state of California, a candle of hope. And Senator Bradford will also be lighting a candle to represent the United States of America, of the candle of hope representing all that have lost their lives due to this pandemic in our country. While Senator Bradford is still trying to light the candles, we appreciate his efforts and his time. We would like to bring up Pamela Thornton, 
who will read a poem. We hope that it will bless each and every one of you. Followed after Pamela Thornton, we'll have Bishop William Todd Irving of Church One of North Long Beach give us a close and a benediction or closing prayer. Then we will close out the same fashion in which we opened up. We will have Elder Dwayne Johnson render a selection to bless all of our hearts and minds. Pamela Thornton. I'm going to recite the poem, I Never Said Goodbye. I never got the chance to say I love you. I never got the chance to say I'll miss you. Nobody told me that you were going to die. It hurts. I never said goodbye. Where are you now? Please talk to me. Show yourself and let me see. I know that I can't happen no matter how much I try. All I wanted to do is say goodbye. I hope that you are happy wherever you are. I have you in my heart, no matter how far. To the heavens above, I wish I could fly, only to give you a warm goodbye. I will remember you each day that I live. You are such a good person with so much to give. Such a privilege to have known you, no one can deny. I think it might be time to say goodbye. I will keep you with me, the good times that we shared. I want you to know just how much I really cared. Till we meet again, on God we must rely. I love you, I miss you. And for now, goodbye. Next up, we'll have the senior pastor of Church One of North, in Long, North Long Beach, Bishop William Todd Irving, senior pastor of Church One, to give us a closing prayer. And then after which, we'll have Elder Dwayne Johnson, uh, who will give us a selection. Bishop Irving. Bless you, Assemblyman Gibson. It is cold. This will be a quick, hot prayer. Amen? Amen. Father, we come. We bless you. We thank you for this gathering. Thank you for the foresight and insight of Assemblyman Gibson and all these other elected officials that have joined in to give celebration to the lives that they care about. It shows, Lord, they're not just politicians, but they are public servants because they care about the people. Give comfort to the families. Holy Spirit, you said that you will be a comforter. Do that, which you have already said. We bless you. We thank you as we leave this place. Never from your presence. Grant us traveling grace. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let us say thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you want to know where I'm going, where I'm going soon, if anybody asks you where I'm going, where I'm going soon. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. Oh, 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 I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. 
I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. I'll take the pain, the heartaches they bring, the comfort in the wind. I'll soon be gone. Oh, as God gives me grace, I'll run this race until I see my Savior face to face. Oh, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. Oh, oh, oh I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. Yeah, I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. Thank you very much, Elder Johnson. This concludes our celebration of life, reflecting and, and remembering those who've lost their lives due to this pandemic. I want to thank all the elected officials from the 64th Assembly District, those who are still here, and those who also had to leave. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. I also want to thank Senator Bradford um, and all the pastors and bishops for being here and supporting us. And I'll, let me just simply close by simply saying this. We would ask that you continue to do everything what our health experts have instructed us to do. We had a tough 2020. We could not celebrate Thanksgiving and all the holidays and birthdays that went along with that year. And the guarantee that I'm believing that we'll be able to celebrate uh, in 2021 once we flatten the curve and everyone is inoculated. So pray for each other. Pray for our state. Pray for uh, the United States of America and wrap your arms around those who've lost loved ones due to this pandemic. We can get through this together, but it's going to take all of us working together in order for us to achieve this goal. May God bless you, may he keep you, is thy prayer. God bless you, family. Take care. Thank you all. Thank you all. As cold as it was, I wish I could have brought it. Keep this <laughs> Keep this warm. Oh, 19.